What is going on everyone? My name is Kodamore and welcome back to the New Beginner Java Game Program Tutorial Series Episode 30. Now currently in our game I am in the menu state and right now I have it set up so that if I hold the left and right mouse buttons down at the same time we enter the game. But as you can see that is an absolutely terrible menu state. Now as much as I just want to get into the gameplay aspect of things, I kind of teased you guys with beginning the menu state, so in this tutorial we are going to flesh out a really 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 basic UI or user interface system. So essentially we're going to create a nice system that we can expand on later that will allow us to put input components such as menu buttons into our game. So I've gone ahead and inside of my sprite sheet I've added two simple really bad looking menu start button textures as you can see. The first one up here is going to be the regular start button, the second one down here is going to be the texture that will be shown when our mouse hovers over the button. That way we get more of a nice button look that kind of changes with the mouse. And along with that I've gone into the assets class here and I've just created a buffered image array called button start and that just holds both of those button images I just showed you cropped out from my sprite sheet. So let's begin. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to right click on my main package, go up to new, and instead of class we are going to create a new interface. Now we haven't used interfaces yet and if you don't know what they are, don't worry about it. I'm going to pop this into a new package .ui .user interface and I'm going to name this a click listener. Go ahead and finish that and now we have our interface. And in this interface we are just going to have a public void on click method like that. Now for those of you who haven't worked with interfaces before, an interface is essentially a template for a class. Interfaces can't contain any methods or anything, only the structure of a class. So what we said is anything that implements this click listener class must have an onClick method. So if we ever create another class down the road that implements this click listener class, all that means is that that class must have an onClick method that returns void just like that. And we'll be using that in a little bit and I'll explain exactly why we need it when we get to it. Go ahead and click on our new UI package. This time we'll create a new class and we're gonna create a UI object class. This is going to be kind of like our base entity class. It's gonna hold all the core components of every user interface object that we might have in our game, such as buttons, sliders, anything that we might add in the future for the user to interact with menu-wise. Now this UI object class is going to take in a float x and a float y as position and width and height just like the entity. And we'll go ahead and make sure we have some protected variables for those. So int, width, and height. And I'm going to go ahead and set them down here. This x equals x for everything. And then we are also going to go ahead and we are going to create some getters and setters for all these variables just so we have them. And we're actually going to add another variable up here, protected boolean boolean hovering. And we're going to set that equal to false to begin with and you'll see what that's used for in a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to generate getters and setters for everything here and I'm just going to plop that into our class here and make a comment getters and setters. All right, those are all the variables out of the way. Let's get to methods now. Again, just like the entity class, this is actually going to be an abstract class because a UI object is too broad for us to create. We're gonna have a UI button that extends this class. And again, you can have a UI slider or whatever you wish to implement in the future. So we're gonna have a public abstract void tick for the tick method, public abstract void render, taking in a graphics of G to render everything. Go ahead and import that, and then we are going to have a public abstract void, void on click. So basically every single UI component, or UI object rather, is going to be able to recognize when the user clicks on it. It's just something that we'll have globally for every UI component. We might not need it for everything that we make, but I'm just gonna throw it in this main base class. That way everything has access to know whether or not it has been clicked. Now we're gonna have to add a few helper methods in here. We're gonna have a public void on mouse, oops, public void on mouse move, and this will take a mouse event E, like so, and we're gonna have another method very similar to this on mouse release. Now notice how we're taking in a mouse event as parameters there, and make sure to go ahead and import that. This looks extremely similar to our mouse manager class. In the mouse manager class, we have things like mouse released and mouse move that take mouse events and that's actually going to come into play very soon. But we're going to use this mouse event object that we take in as a parameter, just like we did in the mouse manager class. Basically, 
When we move the mouse, we need to check if the user's mouse is currently hovering over this UI object. So if we have a button, in this method right here, we have to detect whether or not the user's mouse is over the button or not. If it is, we'll set the hovering variable up here equal to true, which we'll use to change the image that we render. If not, we'll set hovering to false. Now since UI objects shouldn't be moving around too much, we are going to have a protected a rectangle up here called bounds. This looks very familiar to the entity class, I know. We're going to set bounds equal to a new rectangle, and we'll cast everything to an int, int x, int y, and then the width and the height. So this is just a rectangle that encompasses this UI object. Now down here in mouse move, we need to check if the user's mouse is currently over the button, or rather this UI object, it doesn't have to be a button. So if our bounds dot contains the mouse point, so e dot get x and e dot get y, if it does contain that, we're going to set hovering equal to true. Else, we're going to set hovering equal to false. That's all that's going to go in this mouse move right here. We're essentially just changing this hovering variable, which we'll use when we get to making the button class. Down in mouse release now, this is what we're going to use to detect if this UI object has been clicked or not. Basically, whenever the user releases a mouse button means that they click. So if the user releases the mouse button while their mouse is over this UI object, then we can safely say that the user wanted to click this UI object. So if we are hovering over it, so if our mouse is over this UI object, then we are going to call the onClick method, which is an abstract method that will be implemented by whatever UI object that we have. So as long as we're hovering over the UI object and the mouse is released, then boom, we will call this click method. So that is the base UI object class. So now let's actually make use of this and create a UI object. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new class in my UI package, and I'm going to call this a UI image button. And I'm going to call it an image button because we might have another button in our game that might be able to change text and everything, like maybe in a shop, we have to change the text of the buttons to change the price. But for a menu screen, we will just use images. We're not going to worry about text rendering just yet. And this is, of course, going to extend our UI object class that we just created. So we can go ahead and add the constructor and then add the unimplemented methods. I'm going to go ahead and clean these up a bit and remove all these pesky comments here, like so. And in addition to the x, y, width, and height in the constructor, we're going to take a few more things. We're going to take a buffered image array, and I'll call that images. And we're also going to take a click listener object. I'm just going to call that clicker. Remember that we just created that click listener interface. Go ahead and import buffered image, and we are going to create those class variables. So private buffered image array images and a private click listener clicker. And we're going to go down in our constructor. You guys know the drill. This dot images equals images and the same thing for clicker. So basically the images array at index zero will be the standing regular image of the button. But the images array at index 1 is going to be the image that we display when the user is hovering over it. That's why I had two button textures in my sprite sheet. Anyways, we're not going to need to do anything in this tick method here. We should be able to leave that blank for this UI image button. And in the render method here, we're going to say if we are hovering, so if the user is hovering over, then we're going to do g.drawImage, and we're going to draw images at 1, because I'm going to decide that the index at 1 is going to be the hovered over image of the button. And we're going to render that at int, whoops, here we go, int x and int y, here we go, and width, height, and then null, as always, for the last parameter. Else, if we're not hovering over it, we are going to do the exact same thing. We're going to draw the same image except images at 0 to be the non-hovering image. This is all straightforward, that's just the render method done. Finally, in the onClick method, whenever this button is clicked, we want to perform some action. Now we could just have this be an abstract method and just create a separate class for every single button in our game. So a separate class for the start button, info button, quit button, all of that. But that's kind of a waste of classes. That's why we created the click listener class. The click listener class has one method in it, and that's why we took it in as a parameter to this UI image button. All we have to do is do clicker, whoops, uh, clicker.onClick. 
This way we can create multiple UI image buttons and just pass in different images to them and pass in a different click listener. That way it'll perform different actions when the button is clicked. You'll see how this works really easily once we get to using it. But before we can go ahead and use this in the menu state, we're gonna want something that we can add into this menu state that will handle all of our UI objects because we're most likely gonna have multiple buttons. So we're gonna create yet another class in the UI package and I'll call this UI manager. The UI manager is gonna be extremely similar to the entity manager. Public UI manager, we'll take in a handler just for safety in case we ever need it. And of course, we're gonna want a few variables, private handler, handler, and we're also going to want a private array list of UI objects, and I'll call this objects. So basically an array of all of the UI objects that we want to tick and render. So we're gonna do this handler, whoops, handler equals handler and this dot objects I suppose I can just say objects equals a new array list of UI object like so this will work extremely similar to the entity manager class and the array list is going to work in an extremely similar way so we're going to have a, a tick method of course for this manager as well as a render method like so but in addition to these two methods we have in our UI objects an on mouse move and on mouse release we're gonna add those methods to the UI manager as well public void whoops public void on mouse move and of course that'll take in a mouse event e and public void on mouse release taking in a mouse event e as well that's the main part of this UI manager class go ahead and import mouse event and we're gonna want a few more methods as well just so that we can add UI objects and remove them when we want. So public void add object, and we'll just take in a UI object called O, and we'll do objects dot add O. We'll just add it into the array list. And we'll do the same thing to remove one. Public void remove object, taking in a UI object O, and objects dot remove O. So now in the tick render, mouse move and mouse release, we're gonna do the exact same thing. For UI object O in objects. So for every single UI object in our objects array list, we're just gonna go and tick them. And I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. We're gonna tick them, we're gonna render them, and we're also gonna call the mouse move, mouse move methods, and we are going to call the on mouse release methods if it ever happens, release, like so. And that is essentially the very basics of a UI manager class. Great. This should be fairly straightforward if you guys have any questions at all. Again, leave them down below in the comments, but we've pretty much already done this with entities and everything. The only new thing is gonna be the click listener, which I'm gonna explain very shortly. But before we do this, how in the world are we gonna relay mouse events to the on mouse move and on mouse release of a UI manager? Well, there's multiple ways to do this, but the simplest way and the way that it's gonna work for us right now in this series is going to simply go into our mouse manager class right here and we are just gonna create a variable that will hold a single UI manager at a time. Again, we're probably gonna change this in the future, but for right now, we'll just hold a UI manager in this mouse manager. And we're gonna go ahead and make sure that we can actually set that. So public void set UI manager, UI manager. We'll just call it manager, actually UI manager to keep with the convention. And just do this dot UI manager equals UI manager. So that's just a simple variable that we're storing in the mouse manager class is the current UI manager. Basically, all we have to do is down below in this mouse released method, we will go ahead and do if UI manager isn't null. So if the UI manager exists and it's not null, then we should be able to do UI manager to on mouse release and pass through that mouse event object. And we're gonna do the same thing under mouse moved, except we're just gonna call the on mouse move method. And it's important to have this not equals null check here because we don't want to force the game to have to have a UI manager at all times, but when it does, we want it to actually pass on the events that it has. So now we have a way to pass mouse events on to the UI manager that we have over here. And to get rid of this warning, we will just go ahead and generate a getter and a setter for our handler and for our objects as well, just in case we ever want to do something with those and that will get rid of that warning. That's all the technical stuff out of the way, but let's actually learn how to use this. Go ahead into your menu state. I'm gonna remove all of my test rendering code that we had and my test game state switching code that we had right here. 
and we'll go ahead and we will create a private UI manager, UI manager. Import your own UI manager class, and then we are going to actually create the UI manager and just pass along handler to it. And in the tick method, you guys know what to do, UI manager tick, and in the render, UI manager dot render passing through G. So if we go ahead and run our game, we should get no errors, except now we have a blank menu screen and we can't even get to the game anymore. And that's because, well, we haven't added a UI button or a UI object to the manager to actually run. So I'm going to show you just how easy it is to use our system to add a UI object. Right now we only have one UI object, which is the UI image button that we created. So we're going to go ahead and do a UI manager dot add object, a new UI image button, like so. And remember that took in an XY width and height parameter. I'll just put it at, I don't know, 200, 200, and the width will just be, I don't know, 128 by 64. You can play around with these values later. Then we take in a buffered image array. Luckily, I already have that, assets.button start. That's an array with two images in it, one for the normal image button and one for when the button is being hovered over. And then it requires a click listener. Now, because our click listener class is an interface with only one method in it, it's really easy for us to just create a class that implements that right on the fly. So go back to your menu state here. And as the last parameter, we will just throw in a new click listener do parentheses and then do curly braces like this, hover over it, and you should be able to import, well, yes, import it first, then add unimplemented methods like so. All we're doing here is essentially just creating an instance of this click listener class on the fly that allows us to implement whatever we want in this on click method for this button. So when we click the start button, what do we want to happen? Well, we want to start the game state. So we'll do state dot set state to our handler dot get game dot game state. And we'll just set the state just like we did in the last tutorial. Go ahead and import everything. So this is it. This allows us to add a new play button to our game. If we go ahead and run it here, as you can see, we have the button on the screen. And when I hover over it, well, nothing happens. And when I click it, nothing happens. And that's because we never actually set in our mouse manager, this UI manager object. That's a really simple fix. Right after we create it, we will just go handler dot get mouse manager dot set UI manager to the UI manager object. Now everything should work because everything will be getting all of the mouse events that occur. So if I hover over the button, it changes images like so. And when I click and release, it starts the game for us and we can play just like usual. That's it guys. That's a very basic UI system. Now there is one thing I forgot to mention, and that is we set the UI manager in the mouse manager with this line right here. But that means when we switch states to the game state, this UI manager here in the menu state will still be getting mouse events as they occur. That means the user is still able to click the play button, even though he can't see it once you're in the game state. Now we can handle that automatically if we change the way that we handle UI managers in the mouse manager class right here. But to keep it simple, all we have to do is whenever we switch states, just make sure that we unset the UI manager. So handler dot get mouse manager dot set UI manager and just set it to null, set it to nothing. That way all the buttons in the menu state no longer get any UI input. So that's kind of one flaw of our design right now is having to set and unset the UI manager properly. But once we get into a more advanced somewhat UI manager, which we will in the future, it'll be handled much better, I promise you. That's about it guys. I challenge you to go out, make some more UI objects instead of just a UI image button if you want to, just as a little challenge. Now I will go through really quickly and explain exactly what's happening here. So in the menu state, we have a UI manager and then we set in the mouse manager, the UI manager object to that UI manager. So whenever the mouse manager receives a mouse released event or a mouse moved event, it will simply take the current UI manager that is set, in our case, the one that we created in the menu state, and it will pass along to it the on mouse release and on mouse move events. So for instance, if the user releases the mouse, it will call the on mouse release event of the UI manager. And when that occurs, it'll simply loop through every UI object in the array list here, every UI object that this UI manager has, and it will call the on mouse release event as well on every UI object. And in that case, it'll simply check if you're hovering over the object, it'll call on click. Same thing for on mouse move, it'll check and make sure you set hovering properly 
the mouse is hovering over it, and when the user presses on click in the UI image button, we are simply calling the click listeners on click method, whichever click listener that was passed in to the UI image button. If you guys have any questions at all, leave them down below in the comments, I'd be happy to answer them. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial where we're going to get into some gameplay.